Well, here we are again. Um, uh, you can see from the, what you're watching that we're in front of the crib. Um, the, the Bethlehem stable and it's still kind of Christmas time and it's time to talk a little bit about the uh, the wise men. You know, I'm not sure why we call them wise men. They were called magi and there may be a lot of things in there like magician, uh, possibly doctors, possibly chemists. But what's fascinating about them is that um, somehow, even though they didn't have the Bible that we have and that the Jews have, somehow God was speaking to them too. They probably lived in the Iran-Iraq area and God was speaking to them, listen to this, through the stars. He said, well, how do you know that? Well, when they arrived in Jerusalem, um, they approached King Herod and they said, uh, where, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star and it's rising and we have come to do him homage. What kind of men are these? They're, they're, they're looking up at the stars maybe year after year after year like we Americans do with our telescopes and everything else and yet they were taught by God through the stars that there was a newborn king of the Jews um, who, who, and so they came looking for him and off they went off they went now they arrived at, at Bethlehem of Judea and again quickly Bethlehem means the house of bread it was the city of King David and um, this Jesus who was born in the stable in Bethlehem put in a feeding box, a manger, manje, manje, eat, eat, as a grown-up man on the night before he died would take bread. Bethlehem, the house of bread, the last supper, the house of bread, take this, all of you need it, this is my body. Anyway, back to the three kings. They brought him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Strange gifts to give to a, a poverty-stricken child. Like the child is not even laying in his own manger. It's entirely possible that Joseph had prepared, you know, uh, a bassinet, like a basket for, for uh, Jesus to be in. Like Moses was put in a basket down by the River Nile. And, uh, but because of a census, uh, they were not at home when the child was born. And there was no room for them in the inn, so they ended up in a stable and they put him in a feeding box. Manje, manje. Extraordinary, extraordinary. It points to his poverty, you know, that uh, even when he dies, Jesus will have nothing. So they brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Um, they must have been astounded in a way. These are, as I said, they were uh, they're kings. Uh, I'd say physicians, uh, definitely astronomers. Uh, they must have been astounded when they found when they found the newborn king, and they did him homage. So, uh, the gifts they brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold is a gift generally given to uh, kings and powerful people, you know, and uh, and. But in Jesus' case, uh, the gold is pointing to he, that he's a king, but he's a different kind of a king. 33 years from now, uh, when Jesus is suffocating on the cross, um, the inscription over his head will read, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. So the gold, the king on Calvary, the king of love, the king of forgiveness, the king who by dying destroyed our death, by rising he restored our life, and we look for him to come again in glory. Gold, frankincense, you see the priests at mass with the incense, we will incense the altar, and we will incense the gifts on the altar, 
like the bread and the wine, and we'll incense the congregation because we are a priestly people, and we'll incense the priest because every priest you know is a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek, like Jesus the priest. And so they bring um, incense, and incense when it's been burnt, it's symbolic of prayers going up to heaven. And what are we doing at Mass? We're offering the greatest of all prayers. We're offering the Last Supper of Jesus. We're offering Calvary again, where Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he died and went behind the veil into the heavenly sanctuary. So gold, frankincense, mirror. Mirror is the strangest thing to bring to a child. It's an embalming agent. If somebody had brought uh, an embalming agent to, we'll say, my mother when I was born, she would probably have said, are you, are you uh, trying to put a curse on my child? Are you wishing my child dead? Um, but if we listen carefully, uh, when we come to Mass on Easter and we receive Christ, you know, Moses fed them with manna, Christ feeds us with his own body at every um, Mass. Um, if you listen carefully at the reading that Sunday, it says, when the Sabbath was over, the women brought myrrh and aloes to anoint the body of Jesus. So those are the three kings. Gold for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You think of um, Handel's Messiah, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Um, frankincense, prayers, incense going up to heaven, prayers going up to heaven. He offered himself. Jesus' whole life was a prayer. And then mirror, an embalming agent. Now, one last little twist here. Are you ready for this? You, whoever you are at this moment, are also an epiphany of God. You are God showing off. You say, well, how come? Well, look at, the, look at the word, look at the scripture. On the sixth day, God created man in his own image and in the likeness of himself. Male and female, he created them. We also are epiphanies of God. And I know we're living in this valley of tears, and I know we have an awful lot of suffering on the face of the planet, uh, but we, each one of us is still an epiphany of God. A little homey story for you, please. Um, a woman is making a new dress. Uh, in the old days, when she did all the sewing, she had to find a pattern, or a man and a wife are looking for a new home and you, 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 um, the woman might go through pattern after pattern after pattern until she finds the one she really likes and she says, that's the dress I would really like to make. Or the man and his, and his wife, this one, this one, we've seen hundreds of homes, but this home we really like. This is the house that we will build. Okay, well, excuse my limitations here. In his divine mind, the eternal God went through billions and billions and billions of souls. And then the day came where you came on the screen of the mind of God. And he said, this is it. This is the soul that I want to create. Now I know God doesn't have to stop and think things over, but it's still real. God could have created billions of people other than you but he didn't he created you so um, you know whether you like it or not and it's hard for us to live with it uh, each one of us is an epiphany of God each one of us is God showing off and it's uh, it's hard to live with because we have the original sin and it kind of messes up um, are thinking about who we are and the goodness that's in us from God. Amen.